Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're ready to start decorating our Photo Play Folio 2. I'm very excited. Um, I want to share with you that I had a little difficulty using the instructions. It's just because I've made so many albums myself, I just had it in my mind to do it a certain way and not the way it was written. But I built a second one, and I can assure you that the instructions that come in the packaging work. Now, I can also tell you that there's some things I would have done differently. And I'm going to share with you what those are, and then we're going to start decorating it. So, and you're going to see some marred pages, and that's because I took it apart and reconstructed it, because I really thought one of the steps was wrong. And the step that I thought was wrong was step five. <clears throat> and step five is the step that actually adds the first page. And you can see it's torn here. So... In my mind, this flap should have been attached to the spine. So I put it on the spine, which was incorrect. It actually, get, and this is what the instructions say, it actually gets installed on the inside cover. And that is correct. So this inside hinge is on the cover, not the spine. Now having said all that, there's ample room to apply it to the spine if you want. That's not what the instructions say. I think that's what I would have done. But like I said, it works this way. This is the closure, which in the instructions, it doesn't really tell you what to do with the closure, um, but it holds this first page down. And so the first page is this pocket page, it goes this way, and then you open it like this, and you've got your um, folio pocket, um, which is nice and deep, and I love that, and that turned out great. I used a magnet to hold it closed, and then, and it kind of goes back and forth. So you go left, right, left, right. And then these two are the same. I didn't have any trouble with any of the other instructions. It was step five that was confusing me because I couldn't decide whether to install it on the inside front flap or the spine. And frankly, both work. You can do either one. If you do install it on um, the spine, depending on where your score line is, you may or may not want this. Um, but I would recommend just doing it as the instructions. If you're an advanced uh, album builder, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. So there's our center and there's our um, waterfall. So again, other than, I did it wrong, or did I? Nope, so it goes one, two, three, four. Other than that step five, that was the only thing that was confusing to me. Otherwise, you're gonna have no trouble putting this together. And even if you make a mistake there and install it on the spine, it still works. So I wouldn't even undo it. If I, Knowing what I know now, if I applied it to the spine, I wouldn't take it back off and try to rebuild it. But I also wanted to, in addition to doing this project, give you some feedback on the instructions. So there it is. Okay, now we're ready to do some decorating. So this is going to be a very masculine album, which is perfect for this time of year because Father Father's Day is still coming up. So this is using uh, the collection called Delta. Let me see if I can find it. It's Ciao Bella. And I, right now I'm using the Patterns Pad, the 12 by 12 collection pad, and the six by six. So that's what I set aside for this project. At the end, I'll show you what's left over. I may not need it all. So this is what I chose for the cover. So let's go ahead and get that down. Make sure you've got it on the right side. This is the cover. Um, because it opens both ways, it's very easy to, to mix up the front and back. Let's get this glued down. And then I believe I have my spines and the back cut out. And everything's inked. And I'm going to go ahead and open it and lay it down because I want to be able to see these edges. panic attack. So I'm trying something different. I'm using my old phone as my recording device and then I have my other phone here. My plan is to only use my old phone as a recording device and not have cellular data or anything else on it so I'll never get interrupted. But once I upload this video and see what the quality is, then I'll make my final decision. But before, if somebody sent me a text while I was recording, it would stop the recording. I would not, it wouldn't even notify me that I got a text. I'd just get up and realize, oh my gosh, I just lost an hour's worth of video. And all I have really at the end of the day is a picture. <laughs> so I'm hoping this solves that problem for me and that you still get the same quality of uh, image 
in the video. But like I said, this is a test and I'm still having trouble with glue flow. I think it's me. Not sure. So I'm using the same pattern for the spine. And that's the spine on the left hand side of the cover. I didn't have enough of this pattern to wrap the whole thing. So there's going to be a different pattern here and here. So on the left hand side of the first flap or the first part of the folio, you're going to use the same trim. And I just noticed that I had not inked it, but I'm gonna make sure it's trimmed. It is. Let's get some ink on this. Actually, only one side's not inked, so not so bad. Okay, all right. Hope everybody's doing good. Thanks everybody for all your feedback on um, Catch of the Day. That was very heartwarming. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I really felt like that was not my best effort. And you guys were so kind in the comments and I appreciate it. I think sometimes the album turns out nice, but um, my memory is all about the effort and that one just felt very difficult to me, even though the mechanisms weren't difficult. I don't know what it was. I think sometimes you just lose your creative mojo. But anyways, you guys were very gracious in the comments and I appreciate that. And I'm sure you meant everything. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get this down and then, by the way, I'm doing eight, goodness, eighth inch border, or I mean 16th inch borders. So everything is an eighth inch shorter and narrower to give you the 16th inch border. And that's two, that wasn't right. I have to start again. Um, so you have a 16th inch border. This is a little difficult because it's just cardstock that we're working with. And usually when we're dealing with a spine, it's got chipboard. So this is a little different, it's a little wobblier. It, it turns out nice, but it's a little harder to hold can't push too hard on it when you burnish because there's really not much holding it up. So I'm going to open it all up and then push it into place, burnish it into place. Okay, well, there we go. And I was working too slow, so I'm going to add a little more glue. So that is the, look, need more glue here too, the cover and the spine, the front cover and the spine. Now we're going to turn it over, do the back and then the other side or the other spine. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over. This is what I've chosen for the spine and it's actually, I already cut the paper apart, but it's part of the paper that looks like this. So this is on one side and this is the, the other side, that's the continue. So this is the side, it's the cover. Um, this is the side I'm gonna use on the back. And then this is what I'm gonna use on, I got it upside down, sorry. This is the back and then the spine. And the, I like the way that we've got the rope here and the rope here, so we kind of have a frame. And again, this is the cover. And I think it's the cover of the collection package, not the pattern package. So the interesting thing about Chell Bella is they have all these packages. They have the 12 by 12 collection, then they have a pattern collection, then they have six by six collections, and then they have an A4 collection pack. And the A4 is really um, more about card toppers and papers that are size and lots and lots of cut apart. So if you're a card maker, the A4 is ideal. Um, or if you like to heavy embellish, get the A4. There'll be tons of things to cut apart and it'll be awesome. 
um, but there won't be a lot of full sheets to use with just simple patterns like this, which make it easy to place photos on. But if you like layers and um, embellishments, the A4 is for you. The 6x6 is essentially the same as the 12x12 collection pack, just scaled down. And then the patterns uh, is just that. It's got uh, more patterns in it um, than the 12x12 collection. So more muted pieces like this that make it very easy. I like these as the base because then it's lot easy to put lots of embellishments on top of it. If it's very busy back here, it's hard to keep layering. That's at least the way I look at it. Okay, here's our second spine. And I think this is pretty darn cool. Um, I did go through a little bit of a learning experience putting it together, but man, you could just really put quick projects together as gifts, you know, even last minute. I think, I think honestly, if you gave yourself two and a half hours, you could start to finish one of these, including embellishing. Maybe not getting your photos in, but definitely um, building the folio, covering the folio, um, and maybe even less time. I think it takes about 20 minutes to build the folio. And the rest is cutting and coordinating designer paper. Okay, that's it. So there we are with the cover, the spine, and then the back and the back spine. So it opens like this, and that's what we have. Now this is the, the front, the back, and then of course this piece is the inside. So it's a little bit confusing when you lay it out, but if you look at it when it's all uh, folded up in its closed position, it's pretty easy to tell the front and the back, and it wouldn't hurt to label it. So that's it. Now I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm planning to do on the cover. So this is a cut apart um, from the 12 by 12 collection, and I'm using lots of cut aparts and layers. This is a cut apart. This is actually from the bottom of this. So in its complete state, it's like this. I trimmed it off so that I could rearrange where I put it. I'm planning to use this little piece of leather, which was fussy cut. And then Memories is going to go right down here at the bottom, like so. And I am currently planning to use this lock right here. And then I'm gonna keep everything closed with this um, Grograin Tan Ribbon. Now, just so it turns out, I had this ribbon left over from my last project, <laughs> which was the catch of the day. I used a little bit of it in the project and I had some left over and it, it's enough to wrap around the whole folio and tie it closed. And that's my current plan. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna put it behind the bird or if I want the bow on top. So I'm still working that out. But if you still have that um, ribbon, set it aside because we're gonna use it in this project. Okay, that's it for now. I still have to figure out a little bit of placement and more, Mostly I have to figure out whether or not my ribbon is gonna go under this card and then tie right here at the bottom of the latch or if I want it to come across the whole front of the book. My plan on the back side though is to put the back of the ribbon under a cut apart. So it might be centered or off centered but essentially you need enough ribbon to go all the way around and tie a bow. It's not gonna be actually peeking out from the edge of this. It's gonna come all the way across. So it's likely that you'll have ribbon like this on the back. And then I was thinking of putting an ephemera card to hold it in place and then also just make it more interesting. So that's the current plan. So now you guys know, I got some work to do. When we get back, we will continue decorating this folio. And it's gonna be perfect for Father's Day. Um, even if you don't use this paper, it's just a fast, quick project. It could even be, you know, the last Father's Day, you know, just a walk down memory lane. So I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne and I'm back. And the last time I sat down, we um, had covered the back, the spine, the front, the other spine. So I spent a little time kind of figuring out what I want to do here on the back. And this is what I figured out. And honestly, I can't tell you where this came from. Yes, I can. I think. 
it, it was one of the circles that I previously cut out. And then I scaled it down further with just a, a circle die cut that I had. And then I um, fussy cut uh, the black cardstock and I just noticed I didn't do a very good job. But that's it. That's what happens. Anyway, you can get nested die cuts, but they're, to me, that's too much border. So I always hand cut. And one of the ways I do it is I'll die cut the center piece, set it aside, then I'll tape the die down and I'll trace the outside of the die. Not the inside, but the outside of the die. And it'll give me this nice, really tight border. It's not perfect, but I like it better than having this gigantic border, too much black, too much white, which, whichever your cardstock is, it's just too much. So I picked this out and then I trimmed it down to be smaller. This is a cut apart from one of the pages and I can't tell you why page because I already started cutting through all of them. So my plan is to layer it like so. And then I have this cute little boat, which I forgot I hadn't fussy cut, but I'm going to layer the boat right down here at the bottom. So these are some scissors that I have no idea where they came from. Um, well, I know where they came from. They came from my sister-in-law as a gift for Christmas, um, but I don't know where she got them, but I love them. <laughs> they're a little stiff. I wouldn't want to use them for very long, but they're very sharp, and I like that. So for fussy cutting, it's great. But if you're doing a lot of something, I wouldn't recommend them. I would recommend um, these scissors, which are EK. And you can get them at any craft store, and if you can't find them there, you can buy them from us. But this is a specialty scissor, and I actually think she got it from... Uh, a website that sort of caters to embroiderers and it's made to cut uh, twine and thread. Like I said, it's very sharp. I, I poked myself with the, sh with the pointed end and uh, it, it was like a needle. <laughs> I cut my finger open. So, and I also, like I said, wouldn't use it for very much because it's not very comfortable. But this is a pretty small piece and I wish I would have done it without you guys watching me you're making me nervous <laughs> not really but it's kind of boring to watch somebody fussy cut especially me because I have no skill <laughs> I have to go over and over some people can just whip around it and it looks perfect when they're done okay so this is what the back is going to look like and I'm gonna figure out where to put that boat I'm gonna keep it flat um, ex with the exception of the ribbon that I'm going to use. So I, we can now go ahead and put the ribbon down. So I'm gonna rip, run the ribbon back behind these elements. So it'll be loose on this side, loose on this side, come around and tie in the front. So that's the current plan. And I'm gonna fuss around a little bit more with the front to make sure the placement where I really want the ribbon to come across. I don't want it to come across the middle of the duck. I want it to come down here at the lower part, so I'm going to have to fuss around a little bit with it, but that's where I'm headed. So locate your page that has the circles on it. You're going to choose one. This is the one I chose. I just loved it. And then this is a cut apart from the page as well. And then this is just off one of the designer pages, and I think it's... I'm going to use a, a six by six to, to cover the diagonal. And if I'm not mistaken, this boat was actually part of this six by six um, that I cut away at a diagonal. That's, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. So you might wanna set those aside so you don't cut through them on accident. And then you'll have that. Sometimes I, in, in rare cases like this, I'll do the design work for the cover in the back first um, because you need the largest sheets for the cover in the back, right? And then because this is a relatively small project, um, you're going to use a lot of the scaled down images from the six by six. So, or <coughs> fussy cut from <coughs> one of the ephemera cards because it's not a 12 by 12 scale. Okay. So let me figure out where this is going to go and then I'll know how to wrap the rope around or wrap the ribbon around. Here we are. So I was going back and forth on the front to the back, blah, blah, blah. You saw that. So here's what I decided to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack down part of what's on the cover, but I'm gonna make sure that I can get a ribbon underneath it if I want to. 
but I really need to get the cover placed before I can decide how to put the back pieces in. So this is roughly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start with simple things like just attaching this to this. And by the way, there's chipboard on this, so it's slightly elevated. Let's just get that in. Okay, that's easy, right? And then the second easiest thing is we're gonna put this memories piece on the bottom. And this has chipboard on it, and so does this, but only the bottom. So the top is gonna come right up over it and be flat, but then we've got a little elevation for the bottom part, so it's on the same level as this. So that's pretty easy, and I'm just gonna push it up until it catches the cardstock or uh, chipboard on the back. And that's that. So those are two pieces that we have in place now. Now we can start doing some additional planning. I like that a lot. And then this is the last major element. It's going to go on, flat on this cover surface. I'm not going to elevate it. If I was going to put it on top of memories, I would, but it's going to go behind. So this is a cut apart. I hate it when I don't know where it came from, but I'm pretty sure based on the size, it's from the six by six pack. Um, Cause I cut apart all the small pieces that only had, um, they were like this, but no. There was a sheet where you cut it apart and it was just the same tag on the back side, so you couldn't use it as a full sheet. So the first thing I did with the six by six was cut it apart. Like here's an example. So cut it apart, knowing that really the flip side was just the front or back side of this, so you can't really use it as a full sheet. So I cut those apart pretty quickly. And then, um, then I know that I have those to use as embellishments. Sorry, guys. I got, somebody was, well, somebody texted me, but it didn't come through. I thought it was my husband. Anyway, so that's that, and then I'm gonna do this. So here's what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna get all these elements attached to the main page, but not glue this down. So if I wanna fish a ribbon underneath it, I can easily achieve that. So given this composition, And I do think I want to use this, but it's still questionable depending on where the ribbon lies and how the page lays out. I'm liking that, so I'm going to scoot it up a little bit more. But that looks good, so I can go ahead and glue this like that. And it's going to get glued to the, the black cardstock behind this, not to the chipboard. So it's just going to nest right under it. I think that'll look good. Yeah. So I'm using plenty of glue just in a single strip so I can adjust things uh, quickly as I lay it out in case I want to move it left or right once I get it back on the page. And I think this is going to go under here like that. I want to move everything over. Okay, I think that's it. So I think it's going to go right there like that. Okay, so now the last main element is this piece right here. And that's gonna be pretty simple to do. We're just gonna put some glue on the chipboard pieces. And in this case, I just really wanna make sure I'm showcasing that basket of eggs. So I think that's gonna look good. I'm gonna tack it down and then pull it back to the cover and make sure it's gonna fit, and it does. So now, before it completely dries, I just wanna square it up. Whoops. So I'm using my grid here to get kind of a straight line, and then it helps me figure out if this is straight or needs to be adjusted, and it needed to be adjusted even though it's not all right angles, and I deliberately did that because that's the way the print works, but also it makes it a lot more forgiving as you're putting your collage together. Make it a mess. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna set it here gently, and then we're gonna make a decision about whether or not the ribbon's gonna go on top or behind. And I need a minute. 
to let it dry so I don't have to worry about it sticking while I'm trying to make that decision. So I'll be right back, guys. Okay, uh, figured it out. So while I was away, it's, it's one of the things that's hard is that it doesn't stay perfectly square. So you want to make sure that you're holding it square, which will happen when you tie it. But you want to make sure you're holding it square when you're finding the placement for um, your cover elements. So I did that, and while I was away, I went ahead and up here drew a little corner because I know that's where I want this to land. Okay. So then I also decided after I did that that I am going to have my ribbon come completely across the front, and I'm going to use these pieces on the back side to anchor it. So the ribbon's gonna be free on the spine and free across the front. That's my current plan. So we don't really need to fool with that now. And I also know I'm not gonna glue it underneath this main element. So we can go ahead and get this piece down or this collection of pieces down. <laughs> my dog is on overtime. She's so funny. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so excited to tell you guys. Um, Two things. One, I had lunch with my sister today. Yay! I just don't see her enough. She's my favorite person. And um, we are... <laughs> that's my dog being busy outside. We are very close in age. We are 11 months and two weeks apart. So we grew up together, literally. Um, I was the general pain in the butt, and my sister was the captain of everything in high school. Um, and I was, out, I was never in anything. So... I was just the person that got that filled in when somebody else couldn't be there. And of course I made it more difficult for her. But anyway, she loves me and I love her and I had lunch with her, so that was awesome. So the other good news I have is we are, when I say we, mostly I mean Julie, the brains of the operation, is actively looking for a retreat space for us here in San Diego and I'm so excited. And the last few times we've had a retreat, it's been very small uh, based on the size of the um, event space and what we could afford because we couldn't sell out. Um, and we also weren't doing classes. It was just cropping. But we're going to try to do um, a crop as well as classes. And I'm just very excited to get together with people again and craft in the same room as other people. So I'm pretty excited. She's looking into a few places. It'll be bigger. Um, ideally, we'll have dedicated class space, um, which the first retreat we ever did, that's what we did. And um, that meant you could walk away from whatever your stuff was and come and just focus on a class and then go right back to where you were instead of trying to work in your cropping space and having to clear everything off just for class and then pile everything back on. And I thought that made it ideal. Um, as a crafter, I, half the task is getting your workstation set up and then have to disassemble it to have a class and then reassemble. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Anyways, so I'm excited about that. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. Very excited. That will be nice. So there'll be more information coming forward um, next Middle of next week, we're supposed to meet with um, an event space and actually two and try to figure something out. So please keep your eyes open for the um, email announcement, letting you guys know what's going on. And I'm very excited. I would love to meet some, some of you guys that we haven't met yet. Um, there's so many of you guys. You're so gracious and we love you. You're great customers. Anyways, I hope that all works out. Timing-wise for you as well as us. Oh, look at that. I didn't move it over far enough because I forgot to lay that down. So the question is, pull it up and move it over or do without? I really love the keyhole. But you know what? I'm not going to pull it up. I'm going to leave it as is and I'll find something else to make that interesting. I don't want to tear up my cover. So that that is what it is, okay? So now... I set aside my ribbon. So now we're going to figure out um, where the ribbon's going to land. And when we do that, then we can quickly go around to the back side and mark it um, with a pencil and then come back and start to build our embellishments on top of the ribbon, um, knowing where it's going to land on the front page. So ooh, let me tell you how much ribbon this is. 22... 
it's 30 inches. So it's just shy of a yard and you you need most of it. You don't need all of it. It's just shy of a yard. For those of you who haven't been watching me that long and watching me struggle with right-handed things, I'm here to tell you I'm left-handed and I can only do a bow upside down. So whenever I'm putting a bow in something, I have to turn the whole project over so the bow's trailing edges come out right. I don't get it. I st I've tried to reverse my technique to figure it out. I can't. I can't do it. It's too ingrained. So let's tie this and then we're going to slip it up and down until we find the perfect sp space and then um, I'll draw a line on the back side and that's where we will tape down the ribbon. But see how the trailing edges are going in my direction it's going up but in your but in the direction of the pattern it's going right or correct. So there you go. So now my my two tag lines are going the right way. But I tell you, I've tried to reverse my bow technique, can't do it. Okay, so this is pretty much where I want. It doesn't really matter. We can decide where the bow goes later. What we really want to know is where the ribbon needs to be fastened. So what we really care about right now pretty much is the top and bottom of that. And it even can be rough like that. So you just want to know roughly where we're going to tape it. We can decide where the bow goes a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to do now that we have those marks, is spend a little time locating the bow. And then once we do, we can tape this down and then add our elements on top of it to anchor the ribbon. This is where I need a third finger. Especially with <laughs> grow grain, it's so thick it really wants to undo itself. Okay, so there's the ribbon for the most part. We're gonna put it right about there. So where do we want our bow? Here, centered. I think I like it centered. So that's what I'm gonna plan on. So now that I know I want it centered, it's easy. It just means the center of the ribbon, right here, is gonna go to the center of the page. And that's pretty easy peasy. So the other thing I'm gonna do, instead of gluing the ribbon down, is I'm gonna put tape on the back of the ribbon. Rib ribbon and we're going to tape it down and then we're going to glue some stuff on top of it. So I'm setting it down so I know that this grid line is my center and then I'm going to use a little tape. I don't know if this might be too wide. We'll figure it out. Uh, it's okay. Well, I told you what my center was and I lost it right away. There it is. I'll crease it a little bit so I can see it when I lay it flat. And there it is, right there. And this is 3 8 inch tape, which works perfectly. Okay, and that's what's going to go here. We're going to use that to hold everything in place. I have a top and a bottom line so I know roughly what to do and then I'm going to cover it up with some elements that are hiding the back of the tape and also anchoring it into place and um, if in the end any of that is showing I'll erase it okay so now it's anchored as you can see and you don't need to go the whole span that's enough we're going to anchor it with these embellishments so I have a couple options. I have this, and then I also have this. And I really like these words better, but I think these colors work better. So we're gonna stagger them a little bit lower than I normally would, just so I can anchor this ribbon behind it. So these are gonna get glued directly to the back cover in this order. So we're gonna glue the round piece first. No, actually, let's glue these two pieces together first. So we have this kind of open space here, and that's where I'm tucking this corner. Okay, so we're not covering up the little boy. And I think that make, that works fine. We'll let that dry for a second. Okay, 
You also want to make sure that this is going um, perpendicular to the water line. Your eye will be drawn to that later, even though it's not obvious right now. Okay, now those two are together, so it makes it very easy from this point on to go ahead and glue this down as a unit. Okay, let's get some glue on the whole thing and we'll push it into place. If you're not sure if you're going to continue to embellish this, I would recommend not putting glue to the very edge because then you can tuck things behind it. Um, but if you glue all the way to the edge, you don't have that option. You have to cut whatever you want to appear uh, coming from the back. Which is one of the reasons I really like putting chipboard and then leaving that little gap between the base, the chipboard, and the element. Because um, then you can tuck all kinds of interesting things behind it. Isn't that cute? Now... Because I had originally planned or thought in my mind that the ribbon would come across the center, I imagine this more towards the top. So it's likely that I'm going to figure out something here. It's a little too empty. So I'm going to work on something for that, but not right now. At the moment, I'm going to open it all up so I can press this into place without squishing the rest of the book. That's it for now. Next time we get together, we'll continue working on the inside of this album. Okay, so I took a minute to figure it out. So I did decide to use this piece of hardware and it's a Graphic 45 keyhole. I, I use them in my projects, but I never use an entire pack. So this is one I had left over and I had a couple of choices, but I liked this one. Um, there's another one that looks a little more Art Deco, but I thought that didn't really, this looks more organic to me, which is what's going on here with our patterns. So I like it and I decided to use it. So here's what I did. Um, originally I had planned to slightly tuck this under here um, and have uh, only part of the keyhole exposed. Then I glued this down and realized I couldn't get it under. So I uh, modified my plan. I put a thin strip of chipboard underneath only this side and then layered it on top of here. And I'm going to show this to you. It's layered as far in as I could get it without exposing this cover, which is what I wanted to do. I didn't want what was behind here to be part of this image. So you have a couple of options. One, you could adjust and shift everything over. Um, and if you decide to do that, my recommendation would be to place your hardware first. And having said that, I'll tell you right now, um, these elements are about a half inch down from the designer paper which means they're five eighths down from the edge of the black paper. And if you wanted to use this and tuck it slightly behind, I would recommend that you shift all of this over. Uh, I don't know. Let's see, uh, quite a bit actually, at least a quarter inch, which means more of this would have to be behind here. At the moment, this piece of designer paper that's backed with cardstock is a half inch away from the hinge. So that gives you some idea. So you're about five eighths down, a half inch over to this piece, not to the main piece. And then probably a little more than a half inch off the bottom. It's actually closer to three quarters of an inch from the edge of this black cardstock to this black cardstock. So that's what I did. If you wanna have this slightly tucked under your image, shift everything over a quarter of an inch. You don't have to go up or down, just look over a quarter of an inch and that'll give you what you need. Otherwise, if you wanna use it the way I did, you definitely need to put some chipboard behind the right-hand side and then leave this side without chipboard and it'll fit on perfectly. So there's always a solution. <laughs> See you soon. Hey everyone. I know it's a huge mess, but that's what happens when I'm doing the cover and the back. Um, I have all these bits and pieces and there's a lot of fussing around before I make a decision. So the last time we were together, a few minutes ago, um, we'd finished the cover and I told you how to attach the keyhole, which is a Graphic 45 keyhole. By the way, whether you're new or old, click on the show more in the description and you will find, first of all, 
our website. Secondly, the material list for the elements in this project. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll find the cut list. All that's for you, free. It's available to you. You do not have to shop with us. We appreciate it if you do, but it's not a requirement. And also, if you're new to the channel, I want to let you know that um, my projects are funded by our shop. So we're in business to sell paper and not projects. So if you find whether you're in the United States or not, and that's all we sell to is the United States, even if you're outside the United States, if we have a tutorial that's online, it will remain online. We have no plans to take any tutorials down ever. So long as um, YouTube doesn't change its um, policy, we have no plans to take it down or to start charging you for the tutorials. They're free because we're trying to drive business to the shop. If you can shop there, great. If you can't and you're out of the States, share. Click, like, leave a, leave a message because that helps us float to the top of the um, recommended list. And the more people that uh, see this, naturally the more people will find our shop and so we appreciate that if you can't shop in the united states that's the biggest thing you can do to help us is just click like leave a comment and share so again that's the end of that that's a little bit of a commercial break but i do want to let you know if it's there it's going to stay there um, whether you shop with us or not and we just appreciate that you come over to our channel and enjoy some of these projects so this is finished um there's the keyhole that we went over the last time here's what i wound up doing on the back side so this is a cut apart and I went over that. It's from the 12 by 12 collection. This is a cut apart and this is cut apart from something else as well. And I, I think it's the six by six. I'm almost sure it's a six by six. So I used two pieces and then we haven't laid them down yet. Um, two six by six to cut off, uh, cut out the diagonal pockets that are inside the album. And I tried to preserve the flip side to use somewhere else. I believe that's where I got it from. I'm actually not positive. But the last time we were together, we had these two elements down in the ribbon, and then I decided there was just too much blank space, and this is what I did. And I think it looks gorgeous. However, having said that, this is also a perfect place for a photo. So if you have an ideal photo, don't put this here. <laughs> just put the mat here and put a photo here. I think it'd be ideal. So it, I just think it's a great, location everything else is shifted down enough that you could actually feature a photo here and i think it would really stand out so that's it for the cover the spine the back and the other spine next time we get together we're gonna work on the inside and that's what's coming up next and here's those diagonal pockets i was telling you about right here and i'm going to do this bird here and this bird here so that they're sort of facing each other but I haven't figured out the rest of my papers inside so that's about as far as I've gotten on the inside but the outside's done thanks everybody for tuning in this is Daphne from Scrap and Create see you soon